everybody, thanks so much for coming out. Uh, as Troy said, this is uh, the UB Blade Center's celebration of Black History Month, but also just celebration of Baltimore. And uh, we're so glad to see so many people here. We got our young people here, our older people here, people from all, just all races and all backgrounds coming to enjoy this. And that's really what we wanted to show. We wanted to show, in particular, how years ago, despite the struggles and challenges that African Americans might have faced in Baltimore, they still persevered through dignity and uh, engagement of their communities and family. You can see that in all the photos. I'm especially struck by how dressed everybody is, even when they're playing basketball or uh, riding a bike. Everybody's creases in their pants. I'm like, I feel bad. But, but you know, and, and now today, we're not, in, we're not. Exactly. We're not doing the same thing. Yeah. So we want what we show here, the programs that we do here, to mean something. Not just come out and have fun and dance and look, have music and all that and have drinks. We want the art that's here to move you in some way. Whether it moves your heart or it moves your, your hands and feet to action some kind of way, we want whatever we do here to be important to you. So we have a couple of people we just want to uh, thank and recognize. First of all, of course, we want to thank the Maryland Humanities Council because without their funding, this would not be possible. So we can give them a round of applause. Representative from uh, the council. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Marilyn Hatza, and I'm the uh, program officer for grants and strategic partnerships with the Maryland Humanities Council. Uh, very briefly, our mission is to create and support educational experiences in the humanities that inspire all Marylanders to embrace lifelong learning, exchange ideals openly, and enrich their communities. We are so excited to be able to support this extraordinary exhibit. Um, I think it's extraordinary because of just the ordinary uh, daily life that it portrays. Um, these photographs are very important because of their depiction of just the normalcy of African American life in history. So thank you again for coming out in this beautifully cold weather. Um, enjoy the exhibit and enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thank you. I want to let you know that in addition to the exhibit, the exhibit will be up until March 31st, so you have time to come back and bring uh, other friends and family and people to see it. But we have different programs uh, that we've planned throughout the next two months, so you can come and get a, even a better understanding. And uh, something coming up on Sunday, February 20th, we're calling it a photographer's roundtable. And we've invited even some additional exceptional photographers. So in addition to uh, Webster and his father, who are going to be here, uh, we also have Valerie uh, Russell, who and she actually came to she came from DC to uh, be with us. She was a former photo photographer with the Afro American, both in DC and in Baltimore. And so and actually, that's how I met her through her photographic work uh, there. And then also Jay Baker. Where are you? Are you still here? Oh, he's here he is. And Jay also knew him years ago, and he uh, has been a photographer for uh, Mayor O'Malley and then Governor O'Malley. And, uh, and he's got a great uh, political career, but also, uh, I'm not sure if you were with the Afro at the time as well. Okay. And then um, our another photographer will be with us, Sharon Farmer, and she was a photographer for the Bill Clinton administration. So we have some photographers who really are going to talk about their role as an urban storyteller, how few photographs, they're, they're really documenting history and, uh, and how we relate to that. And then we have a free youth photography workshop. So if any young people, if you have any kids that you would like to learn a little bit about photography, ages 12 to 18, we will take you if you're a little bit older, if you just insist. Okay, you can come too. And you don't need a great big fancy camera, a 35 millimeter, if you have it, that's great. But even if you have your cell phone camera, uh, Webster is going to, uh, show you a little bit about photography in a five-week program. All right. uh, I know there's a lot of things I want to say, but I don't want to forget them, so I at least want to make sure that we uh, introduce to you uh, our curator of today and of uh, this exhibit. He is uh, one of the Phillips, one of the photographers of this, of this fabulous family, the Phillips family, who have been three generations of photographers. Uh, at the Afro-American, at the Sun Paper, starting from the 1940s, his grandfather, his father, and now himself. So, if you don't mind coming up and just saying a few words, don't look at me like that. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really glad everybody can make it. Um, like, with these photographs, it's pretty much like time traveling. Every time you look at the photos, the last couple of years, I've scanned about 10,000 images. And the 
main goal now is to identify these images and make them available for people online to be accessible for educational purposes, for cruising down memory lane, for just kind of taking the time to look at the history because it's really not out there. It's there, but it should be really be at your fingertips. So I just encourage anybody to um, Google I Henry Phillips photo, go on Instagram and Facebook and all that, I Henry Photo Project and get involved with the identif identification process. We're going to try to have some workshops um, based around identifying these photos uh, in the next couple of months. So just try to stay in touch and um, talk to me at the show. If anyone would ever like to come and view the collection, bring some people by that might uh, be able to identify some things, let me know. Uh, if you're a teacher, I'll pull up education to see who you might recognize. If you're an athlete, I'll pull up some sports. If you're a boxer, I'll pull up some boxing. So uh, just thanks everyone for coming out. Please tell a friend to come down and check out the show uh, after tonight. Thank you. I know that uh, Anderson actually had identified a couple of the photos up front. Did you tell me that was at, at Weirdness? Oh, you told him? No, I want you to tell everybody. <laughs> anyway. Uh, and I'm not sure, the photo that's on the front that we're using, two of these ladies were supposed to be here tonight. I'm not sure if they are here. Uh, if you are here at some point, let us know. But um, I'm not exactly sure what year this photo was taken, but um, I was hoping that they had said that they were going to come and just that, you know, that they're still with us and can give us a little bit of background about life back then and uh, what these photographs have meant to them. We're going to have some of these photos as posters for you as well. If you'd like to purchase a poster, uh, you'll be able to do that. So um, I don't think that I would believe it. I don't think I like that idea. I want to thank Scipio Caterers. Uh, they've done a wonderful job and over there. And our band, Freddie Dunn, and his uh, trio. And continue. Our website is gbblakes.org. Please use it. Please go there. If you haven't signed our email, please do that. We want to keep you in touch with what we're doing, what's going on here. Not just with this exhibit, but with a lot of other things that are going on. And uh, the UB Blake Center has been here a long time, but we're continuing to grow, continuing to do some fabulous things. So thank you again for coming out. I don't know where Troy has gone, but please meet your neighbors, talk amongst yourselves, and see a photograph, and have a good time. Okay? All right, thanks so much. Thank you.